In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily create functions like year to date, quarter to date, or month to date in Power BI. We're going to go through the demo together so you can understand how to do it step by step. And also, I'm going to show you an easier way to do this using quick measures in Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Let's go through this demo that I prepared for you today. So this is a simple car sales data set that I used for a previous video and all it does is it shows the car sales price by year and by car. If we go to the data view I can show you how the sales looks like. So it just shows the cars, the models, when they were sold and the price. We also have a data table which we use for our time intelligence functions. We have a calculations table which we use to store our measures. At the moment we only have one measure there which just shows the sum of sales price. And we also have a car order table which we use to sort the car for custom sorting. If we go to the model view, again it's pretty simple. We have the date and sales relationship and the car order to apply the custom sort. So let's go back to the report view and let's convert one of these into a table so we can start our demo. So let's start by creating a new column to calculate the year to date. So let's go to our calculations here. Let's right click, new measure, and then let's type sales year to date. And then here we type total year to date. So this is the function that we'll be using. You'll see it asks for four items here, but only two of them are mandatory. So the expression and date. So let's do the expression, which is the sum of sales. And the date is our date table so the the date column specifically and by these two by itself it should just work so if we hit enter and let's bring it into the table you'll see that we will now have the sales year to date for every month that we have so just to recap the year to date accumulates the number of sales that we have for that specific date so for example the february 2020 it's the sum of february and january together and then it does the same thing for march from january to march until the end of the year and then it resets again at the beginning of the next year which is january so now let's go back to the calculation and let's explore what these two other optional values that we could have added in our sales year to date so if we remove that and let's add another comma here it allows you to add filters to this calculation so if you want to add a filter context to this total year to date you can do that using this expression so let's say for example we want to just do a sum do a total year to date for cars for jaguar cars right so if we do a car it should be yeah car is equals to jaguar and then let's close that now you'll see that it's not exactly the same as the sales so it, it, it shows a much lower number and that's because it's only applying the total year to date to Jaguar sales so you'll be able to see that clearer if we if we filter the table to just show Jaguar so you'll see that this is how the sales price for Jaguars look like and the year to date for those. So let's go back to the year to date again and let's look at the last one. So the year end date allows you to modify the end date of your year to date calculation. So by default it's January to December which is December is the end of the year to date and January is the start of your um, of your year-to-date calculation. However, for example, you might want to customize this. Uh, maybe your financial year is different, so the start of the year is not January. Let's say it starts mid-year. This is where you'll be able to customize it. So let's pretend that the year, the year end for 
your company or whatever your sales financials are is in June so that's the end and then the beginning of the new year is July what you'll need to put is the month and the day of the end of your year end so let's say put the 30th of June here and let's close this calculation we hit enter you'll see that it now changes up the calculations a little bit here so if we look at June you'll see that the accumulation for the year to date there it ends there and then it resets in July which is the, the new year so this last expression allows you to modify the year end date for your calculations which is pretty handy now that we covered how the year to date function works the other two functions pretty much work the same way so let's start writing them and I can show you what the differences are so let's do quarter to date sales quarter to date total quarter to date sum of sales and date you'll see that it doesn't give us the same number of options so we can it doesn't make sense the year-to-date filter here so we will just do at the moment sales quarter to date and also sales month to date which it doesn't really make sense at the moment because we are already aggregating this by month but anyway let's let's do it total month to date do sales and date so let's bring those into our table here and let's remove our filter just to not make it look too confusing let's remove the optional filters here and there you have it so now we are able to create two date functions like year to date month to date quarter to date against the sales price quite easily now if you're not too familiar with creating DAX functions yourself Power BI allows you to generate these measures quite easily using quick measures let me show you how you can do that so if you go back to our calculations here and let's create a new quick measure here this gives us a UI to actually generate a lot of time intelligence functions and, and other types of calculations that you, is available for you. If we look here, we will have a couple of options. And under time intelligence, you will have your options that we are normally doing the, the year to date, quarter to date, month to date. And you also have other aggregations that you can use at the moment. Let's just do year to date. And then from here, it's asking for base value, which is our sales. Uh, let's use the, the measure that we have, sum of sales. And the date is the date column. If you hit OK, you'll see that it will generate a new measure for us here, which pretty much if I click on it, it's this, it is the same as what we already created, except it's generated for you automatically without having to write the DAX functions yourself if we drag it into the R table and put it side by side with the year to date you'll see that it shows the exact same number let's try something more interesting right so let's try another type of calculation that we would normally write so let's do a new quick measure and let's have a look and see the time intelligence again let's try to bring in month over month change so we want to see how the sales value change uh, from month to month so it's asking for two things again. So let's bring in the dates and the sum of sales. Hit OK. Again, it generates a measure for us. So we don't have to write anything at all. And if we drag it into our table and just let's just focus on it so we can see it better. So you'll see that it now shows us the, the change of our sales on a month to month basis so how it changes from 47,000 to uh, 1.5 million that looks like and 
that's it and you didn't have to write anything at all. There are lots more of calculations that you can use with the quick measure so I suggest you have a play around with it and see what you can use. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how you can use to date functions in Power BI. If this video helped you, let me know by leaving a like. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.